According to the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria's real estate industry accounted for 6.39% of Nigeria's GDP in 2020. In today's video, we're going to be sharing the story of a 31-year-old real estate developer who started from the bottom and has been able to find success from building homes for Nigerians. First of all, how old are you? I'm 31. You're 31? Yeah. How did you get started in the real estate industry? I think um, the story should be about when I started business, not just when I started real estate, because real estate is like seven or eight business that I actually um, wow. founded. Oh, yeah, you're, yeah. A, you're a serial <laughs> businessman. And a lot of people, a lot of people will say, oh, uh, how are you able to do all that in uh, just 31 years of age, 30? I've been in the business world for 15 years. My first business was registered when I was 16. Um, what business was that? So we were teaching people in a uh, jam class, you know, I mean, I, I just oh, wow. finished secondary school. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just, I think I literally just got a mission. Right? Yeah. You know, we were teaching the secondary school leavers how to pass jam. We were printing books, you know, do tutorial. Then I moved to women wears. Then I sold food. Then I sold cars. Oh, wow. Then, you know, I mean, a lot of businesses, some that I can't even remember uh -huh. right now. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think I've ever worked for anyone. That's so you've always had that entrepreneurship spirit, right, from a yeah. very young age? Yeah. It's crazy because my dad is a lecturer, and then they wanted me to be like him. Like, this boy, you're brilliant. I mean, yeah. you always pass with good grades. <laughs> what are you trying to do? This is why you're wasting yeah. away your yeah. life, you know? Yeah. So we kept doing all of that, you know, pushing. And then I came to Lagos. I think I came to Lagos here 2013. So I schooled in IFE. I was born in the bottom. Lived for 16 years of my life in the bottom. And then when I came to Lagos, I had a shoe factory. We were making shoes, doing shoes. I mean, I was quite a successful shoemaker as well. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and then while we were making shoes, I was supplying some real estate companies. So real estate company, the head of marketing, was my very good friend. And then he was seeing the way I was marketing, I was selling, you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, guy, <laughs> if you sell shoes like this, you sell really. <laughs> so I'll take the brochure, I'll yeah. take it to my factory because, of course, I used sell shoes to top clients. Like how many years ago was this? This was year 2014. I think I did that again in 2015. Mm -hmm. Then I started my company, the real estate company, year 2015 ending. So I started marketing other people's properties, started doing well. I think because I was an entrepreneur before, I had direct access to head of companies, like CEO of those companies. Oh, you that know. you've built the relationship with based with, on the with, shoe yeah. business. Yeah, so oh, I mean, so cool. I was looking for business for them. And it was not, I, I was more than just a marketer, more than an agent, because I give them business advice to them. Like you, when I did this, this time, oh, it didn't work and I didn't oh, think wow. you should do it like that. So they were telling me things, various things and mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, they were impressed by my tenacity and all of those. It was crazy, it was not that easy. We started from a Bejeleki. Then, you know, remember, I was selling shoes at the factory and then I think I had one car that I was driving. Uber just came into Nigeria around yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah, around that time. You yeah, know, and then I had one that was doing Uber for me. When I would take the car, I would drive the Uber around. Like, Are you serious? Yeah, I was ending at night. <laughs> oh, you used to do... <laughs> You know I used to do Uber too. Yeah, I used to do Uber too, but continue. At night, I'm like, oh, well, this guy he wants to yeah, say the box. Wants to <laughs> you know, I'll do it at night because, of course, in the morning, I'm a corporate guy. But then when we wanted to start a real estate company, there was no fund. Though I had support from some of my friends. They fed, and they, you know, God bless them. I think I sold two of my cars. So I sold my factory in Bajula, all the machines that they generate on my computer. My cousin, everybody was like, guy, are you normal? Like, and it was something new, but I believed in it so much. So I sold everything. I think I was able to raise, like, 15 million. We then went to Ibejeleki to talk to the family of those people that want to give us language. They said, oh, go and deposit 200 million. <laughs> we made them believe that it was one 200 million. million yeah, case, but we can't pay at once. You know, we, want, yeah. we have to say that your plan is genuine. Yeah, yeah. This one, you know, all those scope and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> So we gave them the check, I think 15 million euro. There was no money to do all the things. We signed the contract, we put the board on the land. Then I was like, oh my God, we've secured this land now. Where do we go from here? And then they were running from there. Sharing pamphlets, hustling, going to markets, going to meet people, marketing. I think the second day that we launched, we sold one plot. We were selling a plot for, I think, 550,000. But the mm. woman who came to the office, I had you, can you come? I can't buy for 5,000, I'll buy for 400. But look, we didn't have a choice, man. Guess what? Two, three months after that, we did not sell anything. I was the accountant, I was the HR, I was... You were wearing <laughs> so many hats. I was, I was doing everything myself. We just sat down, we prayed, did some strategic move, signed with some partners, and then from there, they picked up. We sold almost 300 plots in another two months. 
what's your background like? What kind of family are you from? So I'm, a, I'm from a very humble background. Mm -hmm. We grew up in Molite, Ibadan. So you're a fully Ibadan guy? <laughs> I'm not a fully Ibadan guy. I'm from Lagos State. I'm okay. from Mayor, but we grew up in Ibadan. The only thing that young people did then was gambling, smoking, yeah. and taking paraga. Paraga. <laughs> <laughs> On the streets, you know. Yeah. So the highest kind of dream that you can have as a young person is to own your own boss. I looked at the environment. I looked at everything. Uh, one thing that helped me was I got exposed to reading very early in life. Books that were much more older than me. So I can say that I read my way out of poverty. poverty. I started mingling with those people, but I, you know, I had to call myself back to say, look, if you mingle with these people, you're going to end up being like them. And I don't want to be like them. You know? And I'm like, you know what? I want to become a cop. No, I want to do this. I want to do great things for my life. Look, I've listened to a lot of them. Oh, someone, hey, politician give him money. Yahoo boys used to give him money. So I'm not from a, a rich background. Uh, maybe if I was, maybe I wouldn't be where I am today. So you have to give thanks to Almighty God for everything. Why did you decide to build your business in Nigeria, despite the fact that you know everybody's complaining about Nigeria? One of the worst days of my life was when I got rejected from the U.S. Embassy. Four of us, you know, we went. I did the interview. I was even the one that spoke. The manager said, "Ah, I can't give everybody visa. I'll give two people visa. Just give pam pam." and omitted me. I'm like, yeah. I was so sad, you know. And I think I read a book then. I realized that it's easier to make money in a poor environment because the poor people don't know how to use money. Rich people, they have the smartest of lawyers. Hmm. It's difficult to get money from them. Hmm. They have to pitch the value so, so much. much. That's why you find out that Ponzi schemes. He, he hits the poor more. more. They, true, know, true. Uh, so it was not like I didn't try to live. I tried to. It <laughs> but didn't it's not work. allowed you. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. Yeah. yeah. And when it didn't work, yeah. I'm like, you know what, let me stay and make money. To be honest, when I decided to stay, I did shoes. I made money, quite not a lot of money, but yeah, quite a bit. You know, before when we started, I was young and people were like, ah, this boy, how can I give this So much money to this him. Boy, yeah. So much money. And then when anybody asked me, oh, who's the owner of the company? I'm like, oh, the owner is in the UK. I'm the one that is managing. Managing it for you. Some of them would say, don't worry, when the owner comes, I will come. I will drop. <laughs> And today's video is sponsored by the like button so please hit the like button if you've been enjoying this video so far so when you hit the like button it recommends this video to a lot of black people out there who can gain knowledge from this video too let's jump right back in we've been able to do wonderful stuff over the year and now you know i'm proud of the team building a business in nigeria is probably one of the hardest things to do what are some of the challenges because i'm sure you've definitely faced challenges you know, trust me they're ugly part of it I've lost a lot of money. I should have probably even been in jail by now. Is it the government problem, the approval? Like you have an approval and one day someone comes to lock up your sites. Even after you've gotten approval? Yeah. I've been to buy land twice. Twice. That's on your own land that you've paid for Pro and your property. Uh, my property, well, I have title, sure. I have everything. I think one of the problems that most entrepreneurs face mm -hmm. is raising the finance, getting funds to start up, and sometimes getting the best earned to work with them. One thing I've noticed from you know going around Africa and showcasing real estate, when you come to Nigeria, it's kind of like almost all the houses are the same. What do you feel can be done? There's difference between when you're building luxury and then when you're building a house that just has to be functional. Most middle income people, they just want to live in functional houses. houses. Remember, they don't have a lot of money. Some of them have even paid for three years. True. They can't use private mortgage because it's too expensive. If you want a functional house that is cheap and you're not prioritizing aesthetics, the developer then in turn has to reduce the cost of construction from design to materials. But if you go to Banana Island or Asokoro, yeah. for example, you probably see different new designs. Design. And that's because, look, these people are rich. They can say that, look, I have two buildings. Some people even say I have an open budget design a villa for me. I want to live like a king. But yesterday, I was in an estate around Ikati. I'm like, oh, look, this is badly built. And the person told me that, but I enjoy 24 hours of electricity and water. <laughs> In our mind, like I'm sleeping. sleeping yeah. I wake up in the morning, there's electricity. Yeah. And uh, there's water, water. And the water is not bad. I mean, what do I what want to do? This is Nigeria and I'm not rich. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, look, we're getting there. If you notice, most of the buildings in Ikoyi now are being bulldozed off. Look at number four, you know, one yeah. of the uh, best buildings in buildings, Nigeria. Yeah. We are doing something on that road to 22 stories on Gerard. It's called the Cove. It's not very luxurious, but we've paid attention to all the details to almost everything. That totally answers my question and it gives me more perspective and I think I understand it better now.
I saw the name Veritasi Holmes. What does Veritasi mean? It's from Veritas, actually. Okay. It means truth, like truth. integrity. So I think uh, when we were trying to register it, and then I think we couldn't find Veritas, or the lawyer made a mistake or something. Yeah. And it was Veritas. I'm like, yo, yo, let's do it. Let's do it like that. <laughs> a lot of people feel like real estate in Lagos is too expensive. Let me tell you. Okay. You cannot compare Nigerian real estate to South African real estate or England or Atlanta. First of all, look at that road that we came in from. Yeah, that road. From yeah. that, you know, we fixed it ourselves. We've done, that we've whole it, road? Yeah, we've done it twice now, you know, and we've spent not less than 20 million, two times. Wow. Isn't yeah, that so, meant to be like government's work? Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> but this is the country that we found ourselves. A country in which I've had to provide the infrastructure myself to make sure that um, a development is done. I mean, uh, who bears the cost? <laughs> and then apart from that, you know, the cost of money for the people that take loans a lot from the bank. I mean, I take some time to, yeah. you know, taking money at 21, 22 percent. That's craziness. Wow. All of this light that you've seen, yeah, is done by ourselves. This water is produced by us. We put transformer, yeah, two or three times now. And they've stolen the cable. One cable is like two. <laughs> Three, four million. Uh, so Damn. we then have to put securities, you know, two, four, seven every night to rotate to guard to the... guide the transfer. <laughs> do you understand? Where do I put that cost? Cost. If I'm going to transport building materials yeah. in developed countries, you yeah. know, use the train. Yeah, Transportation use the train. Is cheaper. Yeah. yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah if definitely. I want to take granite from where we take granite from where, I mean, the cost of granite itself is not very expensive, but the cost of transportation, transportation. down to site is crazy. It's crazy yeah, do you understand? Just last year, reinforcement was 200 and something thousand, and this year it's already 430 to 440,000. Cement was 2006, 2005 when we started this project. Now it's 4,000. These are 100% inflation, not 16% yeah. like it's widely reported by newspapers and all. We've done a lot of projects that were not profitable. In fact, let me tell you, it's easier not to be profitable doing big projects like this than when you do one or two or three or four units. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean... You um, know, when people see massive size, they feel like it's like more bro, money. So this is it, right? When you do projects like this, you yeah. think, oh, so much money. It gives you a lot of revenue. Good. Yeah. But if you do profit by uh, earnings per unit, per unit, you realize that it pays you to do five fully detailed bedrooms bedroom. in Lekki and probably make like 20, 50 million hour each. If you do it like 50 units or 70 units, you realize at the end of the year, you're making five, five million hour each. The wastage, wow. the artisans, management, the people that will steal your steal stuff. Steal your stuff. They are more, it's like you multiply your problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the amount of inflation that will happen in the happen. cost of the projects. True. Do you understand? Because it will take, this will take longer you know, than small. You can years. easily finance five units yourself, but can you finance 70 units yourself? No, yes, you have sir. to go to the bank. bank. The bank will give you a lot of bottlenecks. You know, they can even ask you for your grandfather's birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. all of those. So that's the problem we're facing in Nigeria. Normally they say something that when you're pushed to the wall, yeah. you turn back, right? Yeah. Normal places. Yeah. When Nigeria, when you're pushed to the wall, you break the wall. wall and you keep moving. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, you break the wall and you keep moving. And then that's what we've been doing. So you say, oh, there's inflation, this is our complaint and all, but people will buy. In Nigeria, one of the ways to measure success is by owning houses. Owning houses, true. You know, in other countries, you can say, oh, I'm successful, I have yeah. Bitcoins. Yeah, Bitcoin, yeah, yeah, is no, no. You I'm very successful, own. but in Nigeria, I'm you successful. How many real estate, real estate do, you do you own? True. You know, a lot of people have houses in ATL, in Dubai, and everywhere, but they have to come and buy. And then we have the population advantage, housing shortage and all. True. So the buying power is there. Of course, the inflation prices keep going up. Mm. But I mean, people manage to buy and they will manage to build as well. What would you like to change about Africa? To be very honest with you, there are a lot of problems. I was coming from Dubai to Kenya yeah. and I was harassed at the airport. This guy was literally asking me for a bribe openly. Yeah. It even made me miss my flight. So what I'm trying to say is our people, the leaders, the people, the infrastructure. So if you change something, you just, the mindset is what you change. The mindset, yes, the mindset, because that, that's going to trickle down. A lot of people will say, oh, people, we don't want them to rule. But the younger people are worse than them because I've had conversations with it, a few of them before. These ones are not hiding. We'll flaunt it on Instagram. <laughs> you cannot compare to countries like France, like Belgium, Belgium like England. Yeah. This country like five year, 500 years, 600 years plus. plus you know, true. they've tried, gotten it wrong, wrong tried, tried you know, wrong. and now they're doing well. But I mean, we're literally just 60-something years. 60 yeah, something years. 60 something. So I think that there's still hope. My final question for you is, there are lots of young entrepreneurs watching this, and when they even see the estate, they see the cars, they see the house, they're like, okay, I would like to be like this guy. If this guy can do it, I can do it. What's your advice to a lot of young African entrepreneurs? A lot of people, right? 
like me Instagram I want you to be my mentor but mm -hmm. I can mentor everybody this is friendly yeah. so I have a program it's called learn business with NOLA for NOLA business incubator which I do once twice every year hmm. to bring every young entrepreneurs together talk to them finance strategy management leadership all of those bring in some other top entrepreneurs as well what I usually tell people is building a business is like raising a baby to be very honest with you is a bit hard and it could be very easy as well. People say, oh, but you've built a wonderful company at 31. But I didn't start at 31, I've started since 16. But they didn't know all of that because they said, I even joined the Instagram maybe 2019 or 18. I so that's when they started seeing my pictures. <laughs> see pictures. And they started seeing beautiful pictures. Yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, you yeah, know, the ball is. You know, if I didn't tell you that, I've done Uber before. Yeah, you know, I would not know, yeah, true. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, that consistency, a lot of people don't have it. They get tired. It's like, yeah. Oh my God. You know, a lot of times I get tired as well. But I mean, I get home, pray. Take like two shots of whiskey, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> sleep. Yeah, necessary. <laughs> necessary if you live in Lagos. <laughs> the consistency, the doggedness, the ability to manage people. Yeah. Remember, you need both smart and loyal people to go. Yeah. In fact, you need more loyal people, people than smart, smart people. people too. You know, but that's a conversation for another day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really watch television. I think it was an Edis Award. Mm -hmm. The guy got the award and said, 10 years ago, I was behind there. I think it was Unlimited guy. Oh, okay. You know? Okay, Unlimited yeah. early. Okay. Like 10 years ago, I was camera boy. I <laughs> yeah. was behind. I was hoping that one day I would also be a recipient of this award. Look, that boy also directly for 10 years. Nobody even knew that 10 years ago it was. Who was you know, doing so. that? So the doggedness, the consistency, and the financial intelligence. I've never seen any rich man that don't understand their numbers unless they're just going to be very average and you'll be doing very well strategically and, but you're, you're not going to grow very average you have to understand your numbers your finance has to be top notch even the people that have not gone to school but make money they understand numbers i've met few of them even the people that have made money illegally they understand numbers, numbers so much so you have to be financially intelligent there's nothing executive about being a ceo people just call it chief executive yeah. officer <laughs> <laughs> your job is to think you have to be very strategic. Think for your people, motivate and manage them. And then lastly, I think, keep a lot of money in the bank for your company. Because these are things that I think that they should start with. And then later, they develop their own philosophy to manage their own life. There is no identical scenario, no two identical scenarios. My scenario is different. It will be different from theirs. I can also wear go and sell shoes and move And then do uh, this one, <laughs> yeah. My career and, you know, yeah, it's gonna be different, you understand? True. So they develop yeah, their own philosophy according to the scenarios that they found themselves. Thank you for sharing your Thank story you, with us. <laughs> really appreciate you. And I'm sure a lot of young entrepreneurs out there have learned a lot from your story. In the next video, I'll be going around Lagos with Nola and we're going to be exploring what a day in the life of a 31-year-old real estate developer is like. And we're also going to be checking out some of his properties. So if you're interested in properties in Lagos, Nigeria or in Africa, definitely stay tuned for the next video. This year, we're going to be exploring more stories across Africa. So if you are not subscribed to this channel, you're definitely going to miss out. So please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the next video thank you guys for watching and happy 2022 and i'll see you guys in the next one